Good morning, it's really good to have you with us for our Sunday worship together. If this is the first time that you found us online on our Clarence Park TV, then it's really good to have you with us especially. Uh, and joining in the comments on the live chat, uh, let us know who you are and uh, that you are here. Uh, others who are watching it, if you've got the live chat facility as well, it'll be good just to share your thoughts and reflections uh, on what God is saying as we journey through in this service uh, together. You notice that I'm standing behind a virtual lectern. I thought we'd bring a little bit of virtual church to our service uh, this morning. I got picked up the other week about the window cleaning sponsorship uh, for the sermon and was asked, why haven't we done it with Fuller's Finer Furniture uh, and our church lectern? So our, our actual lectern is at, at the church. So thank you to Fuller's Finer Furniture for the loan of the virtual lectern uh, this morning. Of course, other lecterns are available, but none of them will come up to the quality and standard of Fuller's Finer Furniture, uh, especially because my daughter is marrying into the family uh, in a few years' time. So as we come and gather this morning, I want to invite you to just bow your heads for a moment and to still your hearts. For we come to focus on Jesus. We focus on the one who is our Lord and our Saviour. And we come just as we are, and we ask God to speak into our lives. And so we pause for a moment to be still before God. And I invite you then to join with me with the words are on the screen, the words that are in the blue type as we come in worship together. As Abraham welcomed the strangers, so God welcomes us. God greets us with joy and says, rest here for a while. God brings out water to wash our dusty feet. God prepares a meal to nourish our weary spirits. So let us receive the gracious hospitality of our God. Let us rest in this holy place where there is shade and water, food and laughter. Amen. I invite you to join with us in the singing of a song as Tori and our musicians lead us in the song that I could sing of your love forever over the mountains and the hills. Let's sing together. and the sea. Your river runs with the love for me. And I will open up my heart and let the healing set me free. I'm happy to be in the truth. And I will daily lift my hands. For I will always sing of when your love came down.
Let's pray together. And so, Lord Jesus, thank you that we come and as we gather today, we sing of your name, the one who is above all things, our Saviour and our Creator. And we thank and bless you. Thank you that your name endures through all generations. And now, as we journey through this service this morning together, speak to us by your Holy Spirit, we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. It's time for our Sunday Club online, so I'm handing over to, I'm not sure if it's Mandy or Ollie uh, today, one of the two of them. So uh, time for Sunday Club online. Hi everyone. Now today I've got a bit of a predicament. Look at this. My spoon is bent all out of shape. Don't you just hate it when something like that happens? If I try to scoop anything with it, it would be hopeless, wouldn't it? So I'm not going to, but I know someone who might. Ollie, are you there? Grab this. Oh, thanks, Mandy. Try eating oh. some ice cream for me, please. Ooh. That's not going very well, is it? What about some soup? Could you try that? Do you think it's going to run down his shirt? Oh dear. I think he might get in a bit of a mess there. But a spoon that's bent all out of shape isn't much good for anything, is it? And you know, people get bent out of shape sometimes too. Perhaps old age or disease or an injury can cause somebody's body to get bent out of shape. Perhaps you know someone who can't straighten their back when they stand or walk and their bodies are bent out of shape, just like the spoon. But perhaps sometimes people get angry about things and sometimes that's things that are unimportant. When that happens, we call that getting bent out of shape. Have you ever heard someone say, don't get all out of shape? Now, Ollie's got a Bible story from Luke chapter 13 about a woman who was bent out of shape. Ollie. Thanks, Mandy. One Sabbath day, Jesus was teaching in the synagogue. As he was teaching, he saw a woman there who had been crippled for 18 years. The Bible tells us that she was all bent over and unable to stand straight. What do you think Jesus did when he saw the woman? You guessed it. He healed her. When Jesus saw the woman, he said, Woman, you are set free from your sickness. Then he touched her and instantly she could stand up straight. She began to praise and thank God for her healing. But the story goes on to talk about the religious leaders who were there. They had become very angry because Jesus had healed the woman on the Sabbath. There are six days for work, so come and be healed on those days. Not the Sabbath, he said. Jesus answered the leader of the synagogue, You hypocrites! Don't you unite your donkey on the Sabbath and lead them to get a drink? Even so, it was necessary for me to heal this woman who had been suffering for 18 years. Thanks, Mandy. 
Well, from that story, Jesus then was more concerned with helping people, wasn't he, than he was about keeping the rules. Rules are good, but people are more important, aren't they? So we should remember the next time that we're getting a bit of bent out of shape if someone bends the rules a bit to help us when someone is in need. That's really important, isn't it? That we may just need to bend things a little bit to help one another. Let's just say a word of prayer to God. Dear God, just help us to remember that you taught us that helping people is more important than sometimes the rules. That we can bend those where and they are to help other people in your name. Amen. Paul's second letter to the Corinthians, chapter 12, verses 1 to 10. I must go on boasting. Although there is nothing to be gained, I will go on to visions and revelations from the Lord. I know a man in Christ who, 14 years ago, was caught up to the third heaven. Whether it was in the body or out of the body, I do not know. God knows. And I know that this man, whether in the body or apart from the body, I do not know, but God knows, was caught up to paradise. He heard inexpressible things, things that man is not permitted to tell. I will boast about a man like that, but I will not boast about myself, except about my weaknesses. Even if I should choose to boast, I would not be a fool, because I would be speaking the truth. But I refrain, so no one will think more of me than is warranted by what I do or say. To keep me from becoming conceited because of these surpassingly great revelations, there was given me a thorn in my flesh, a messenger of Satan, to torment me. Three times I pleaded with the Lord to take it away from me. But he said to me, my grace is sufficient for you, for my power is made perfect in weakness. Therefore, I will boast all the more gladly about my weaknesses, so that Christ's power may rest on me. That is why, for Christ's sake, I delight in weaknesses, in insults, in hardships, in persecutions, in difficulties. For when I am weak, then I am strong. Last Sunday we began our new series, Blessed, Broken, Invited and Given. And in this series we're looking a little bit closer at the Lord's Supper and when Jesus took bread and he shared it with his disciples. And, and we're relating that event to our own lives and our own situation. Last week we thought about the bread and how Jesus blessed it and he gave thanks for the bread. He did the same thing, didn't he? Not just with his disciples, but when, when Jesus fed the 5,000, he took the five loaves and the two fish, two fish and he blessed them and gave them to the people. And we thought about last week about what it means to be blessed and how being blessed comes from knowing who we are, that we are children of God. The problem is, as we journey through life, we don't always feel blessed, do we? There are moments when really bad, tough things happen in our lives and we look back and we kind of wonder, well, where is God in all of this? Does God really care? Is God really bothered at all? And far from being blessed, we feel broken, bruised and battered. Paul expressed something of that, didn't he, in the reading that John brought to us. His thorn in his flesh tormented him, he said, like Satan, leaving him feeling weak and broken so that he pleads with God to take this thorn in his flesh away. And as we continue in our journey through lockdown in this time of pandemic, there are many that feel that same sense of battered and physically bruised and broken, emotionally and spiritually as well as physically. And as I began to think and reflect this week on this story, I was thinking about the moment that Jesus took the bread and having given thanks that he broke it. The breaking of the bread involved that sharing, didn't it? That ripping apart in order for it to be saved. Shared, even. <laughs> Aside from communion, there are many times when we take bread and we rip it apart and we tear it apart, either sometimes with our hands or sometimes with a knife. 
And why do we do that? Because actually we need to tear it apart in order for it to become useful. So if you've got a jar of olive oil and you want to dip your bread into it, you can't do it to you, but you tear the bread so it's in a small enough chunk to dip in so that you can infuse it with the flavour to eat. Or if you're like me, you like your bread and jam, you have your bread sliced, it's cut, torn apart with a knife so that you can spread your butter and your jam on it and eat it as it's infused with the flavour, the blessing of what comes through something that is broken and i had this phrase going through my mind this week brokenness allows blessing brokenness allows bread to be infused with flavor just as in our lives brokenness allows us to be infused with god's presence how well firstly because we have to know that we're dependent on god and not ourselves and that comes to a point when brokenness when we realize that but also there's this sense that blessing can come through brokenness when we realise that, that we feel the pain that we feel enables us to also be aware of the joy that we can feel of God's presence. That we can sense and feel God's hope in our lives. And that feeling or that sensing of God's presence in what we do helps us to spiritually be aware of our own sinfulness. And that in its turn leads to blessing because that leads to confession and to repentance and then to forgiveness and to inheriting eternal life in and through Jesus. And so as Jesus broke the bread and as he shared the cup, the bread that was broken and the grapes that were pressed and, and broken in terms of making the wine, there's this sense of reminder that, yes, it is about a body that was broken. It is about blood that would be shed. But actually, as we come to the foot of the cross and as we see the horror of Jesus' body broken, we're also reminded that in that brokenness, we find the blessing of eternal life. Because Jesus' body was broken for you and for me. Jesus took on to himself on the cross your sin and mine. The Bible says that he who was without sin became sin for you and for me. And so as we come in our brokenness, as we come and ask for forgiveness, we can come and we can be made whole and we can be made right again with God. Our broken lives become something that is sacred as they are held in the hands of Jesus. What did Paul say in our reading that John read to us. He said that when he trusts himself into the hands of Jesus, that it's then, although he is weak, that he is strong. Do you know, there's much around us in our world at the moment that is broken. Community is not as it was, it's broken. The church is not as it was, it, it's kind of broken. It's going to become something new. The Black Lives Matter and all the protests at the moment remind us of the broken state of equality in our world and that things need to change. But I want to pray that we'll be reminded this morning that as we come with brokenness, that as we come before God, we can know his blessing and his restoration in our lives. And so I invite you for a moment just to close your eyes as we pray together. Maybe you are feeling broken this morning. Just open your heart today to allow God to come through Christ. Hold you in his hands. And bring you his restoration. So Lord, to those who are broken today spiritually, emotionally or physically. Come touch our hearts and lives, we ask. Restore not just the brokenness in us, but restore the brokenness in our community, our society. Restore brokenness caused by inequality that all may be equal, that all may be beautiful as we thought last week in your eyes.
restore broken spirits. For we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Just want to invite you to remain in an attitude uh, of prayer as I was preparing for this morning. I came across a song written by a young teenager who's part of The Voice, uh, a youth orchestra and choir. Uh, it's for seven to 13 year old people and uh, this young girl had written a song that the choir then performed and uh, I contacted them this week and they'd given me permission to use this song uh, this morning. And I want to use it because it reminds us of the hope that we have that even in our brokenness, as we come to Jesus, that he comes and brings healing to us. He just asks, what is Jesus? Who is Jesus to you? Do you know him as the one who brings healing and hope and strength? For it's my prayer that as you listen to the music in this song, that the words will just touch your life and, and allow you to draw closer to God. And that maybe the words somehow will just enable you just to release yourself into God's care, into God's hands where you will be sacred. So may we come in our brokenness as we listen together. To the broken he is healing, to the worried he is peace, to the fallen he is grace, though undeserved. To the morning he is comfort, to the lonely he is love, to the weary he is strength, but no strength. What is he to you? 
we're going to pray together and I invite you to read with me the words that are on the screen and then we'll pause in between each during which Sheila will be leading us in prayers. So as we bow our heads, I invite you to, in a moment, read these words with me. And so we say, How long, Lord? Will you forget me forever? How long will you hide your face from me? We pray for those who feel forgotten and unseen. May they know that they are remembered and seen by you, God. Help us to partner with you to remember the forgotten. Search our hearts to reveal those we hide our faces from, the outcast, the stranger, or the homeless. Change our hearts that we may turn our faces towards these people and see them as your beloved children. How long must I wrestle with my thoughts and day after day have sorrow in my heart? How long will my enemy triumph over me? We pray for those who know who struggle with mental illness, anxiety and depression. We pray that there will be resources released to help, enough staff employed and finances given towards mental health services nationally. Help us to be a friend and a listening ear to those who suffer. Fill us with compassion and wisdom. Ultimately, we pray for those who wrestle with sorrow, that they may know your victory over those dark thoughts which currently seem to triumph. Look on me and answer, Lord my God. Give light to my eyes or I will sleep in death and my enemy will say, I have overcome him and my foes will rejoice when I fall. We pray for those who might be considered fallen by those around them. May they know your restoration and grace. Help us to not to judge or exclude your beloved children, but instead lift them up in prayer and embrace them with grace we know in Christ. Thank you, loving Father God, for hearing our prayer. We proclaim together. But I trust in your unfailing love. My heart rejoices in your salvation. I will sing the Lord's praise, for he has been good to me. Amen. Thank you for joining with us today. In a few moments, some of us will gather back on Zoom uh, in order just to continue to pray for one another. Uh, you're welcome to join us. Go through our church website just to grab those details. But as we close for this morning, we are going to share together in the words that is for this year, our motto text for Romans chapter 15, verse 13. And so we say, May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace as you trust in him so that you may overflow with hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.